I have been getting a lot of comments in my videos about this. Some of the comments are, when are you going to paint it? Where did that come from? Um, I've had comments, you know, from friends and family that know me about it. And um, I do realize that it's hideous. And it is. It's absolutely hideous. Um, it is also damaged. Bring it over here and show you. I got it, you know, dirt cheap because it's, it's not right. You see this? Somebody had a little fun running into something and uh, dented it. Looks like they tried to maybe pull it out or something and, well, it just didn't go very nice. But I will tell you, this thing is super worth its weight in gold because the off-roading I've done around Alaska here, some of the places I've ended up, the trails are tighter than, the, you know, than what you would think. And I've had some pretty strong brushes up against trees and, and whatnot. And um, this outer portion does a really good job protecting the body work. And of course, when you're driving, you can look out and see the railing and get an idea how far out your nose is. So um, it's very functional. However, it leaves a lot to be desired. One of the things that's um, negative about it is there's really nowhere to attach anything. And I would like the ability to put a shovel or a jack or something out here so that I don't have to put it other places. And some of the aftermarket ones that are out there, a company called Predator, and there's a, a duck um, company, they make a grill for the H1 that's pretty nifty. And they come up and they grab a hold of this helicopter loop up here that gives you something of more protection and more points to attach it. So I actually had a deal with a local welding shop, drew out a design, they ordered materials, um, we went round and round, you know, drop it off in two weeks, yada yada. I dropped it off, it sat there for three days untouched. They said they got busy, couldn't get to it. Uh, brought it back another day, they got busy, couldn't get to it. And at this point, um, it's looking like, at least with them, nothing's going to happen. So I realized I have, I used to have solar panels at my other house, and I have this metal here, and I actually have these little nut serps that ride on the spring for this stuff. And it dawned on me that if I had a combination of this with this, I would have something that I could run and mount stuff on and um, go from there. So. I don't know where this video is going to go. I don't even know if I'll ever publish it or finish it, but I am going to start chopping this factory um, bar up here. It's got some pretty thick metal to try to cut through and do some modifications, but uh, I'm going to start chopping this thing up and see if I can't come up with a design that will not just look better, but and do the same thing this does, but do more by letting me put my jack on here uh, and by providing additional support. And um, did I mention look better? I know that that's not really an issue on something like this, but I would like it to look better. And um, we'll see what we can do. You know, I had to buy a welder. My other welder was a 90 amp that you plug into, you know, regular 110 volt outlet. Uh, it gave it up and it's old, it was old. So I upgraded to the 140 amp. I started to go with a 220. I probably should have bought that one, uh, but I'd have to rewire my plug over there, and which would have been fine. But at some point in time, time is important. Plus, with the 110 uh, volt, I can quickly take that places. I can plug it in my generator, uh, and I can you know plug it in almost anywhere where I need to do a weld. So I went ahead and went that route. But anyway, we'll get started on this. I think the first thing I'm going to do is cut here because uh, while it's functional, obviously being flat like this, what I'd like to do is have it tilting in more because it sits right here towards the nose so I can tighten it up. So what my plan is is to slice that off 
and I'm going to flip it around so that this is now going against the uh, nose instead of away from it like it currently is. So it tilts. I tilt it down. I took my straight edge and I will begin the long arduous process of cutting, what is that, 3 8 steel uh, with my numerous saw blades. Well, I cut through the first leg of it there. It could be welded back, but it's real now. All right, first look at the uh, new look. Basically, you know, I hacked off that and rotated it so that now we've got the, the rake back profile. And uh, I'm liking it. I am liking that. It's just sitting there. Um, I'm gonna need to take at least the center one out because that's in the way of the camera and uh, figure out what else we're gonna do. But I think, I think the trick at this point is gonna be to tack weld this in place. And um, that way I can keep that pivoting in that area until I can move on to the next thing. So I'm gonna get the welder out. I'm gonna get this set in place and put a couple tacks on it. And then, ooh, actually, you know it's cool. That bow that was the other way and looked like crap, it looks kind of cool now. It's got a little curvature to it, you know? So anyway, I'm gonna get the uh, welding machine out and tack that in place. We'll see what happens next. So I am making this up as I go. But what I do see is I need to level off this, uh, this bar here. I'm gonna take it at 12 inches up from the riser and snip it at both sides. And once I get this thing out of the way, I can start bringing my down, uh, my down bar and kind of figure out where that's gonna go. So uh, let me get this cut off. I'm not gonna... It's been a little bit since I last turned on the camera kind of got caught up just in the whole process. But uh, here's what we have right now. Colossal mess, colossal mess. But the idea here is that this gets pinned, has a cross brace that goes through the back. Our front bar up there has the holes in the top of it. So if you want to mount lights or anything on it, you can. Um, and all of this is going to rotate when whenever you pull the pin and, and flip it forward. So be a brace here, a brace back here. I'm gonna close, I'll cut this bottom out and replace it with another one, probably one of these uh, right across here. Make sure that the winch can still open and I'll tack that in. And then I gotta figure this part out. I've got some ideas, um, but let's see what happens here. Everything's just kind of temporary and bungeed in place, but I'm going to bring the, bring the heat here and uh, tack that in, and that's going to get me that much closer. So continuing my theme of making it up as I go, I straightened out this uh, bent side pillar, and I've decided, well, it's hard to do with one person. But I've decided what I'm going to do is reattach it. I'm going to drop it and kick it at an angle to match the other angle. And that's going to bring it down, give it some shape, some definition. And I think kind of, you know, give it that functional look of something. So uh, let me tack this in place. I'm going to cut that one off, tack it in place, and then um, stand back and take a look. Once those are looking pretty decent, I need to make a connection across the back. I need to do some uprights, some general grinding, cleaning, extra welding. All right, so we're going to shout over the engine. But here we go. It rakes back. Utilizes the original outside windows for the, head, uh, for the blinkers. 
and right now it's sitting up a bit. I need to drill this and put a pin through and that'll hold that up. But now I can put the T-bolts in here and I can actually mount things to the truck. It's day two of the uh, brush guard build and I got to talk over that thing. Um, that motor is going out. I had to take time away from the build yesterday to try to hunt one down. Not sure that I was successful. It sounds like it's grinding itself to pieces. I can see the fan wobbling, whole thing shaking. And, uh, you know, wouldn't be that big of a deal, except it is still winter time. It's 16 degrees this morning. And that's the water heater for my house, which is in the garage, which there's water pipes and stuff, you know. Absolute genius design to put that out here instead of maybe in the crawl space. So if that goes out and we freeze, that freezes and, you know, whatever. So, it's not a pretty truck. It's ugly. It's rough. So let's just keep that theme going. So I decided I'm going to make some pie cuts somewhere around here and bend this guy down and uh, cap him off. I'm going to take the quarter inch plate that I used to build this with and make some webbing. Ooh, that could have been bad. I'm going to make some webbing, some reinforcements or gussets in here, maybe in here. So uh, one other thing, this truck is painted with a paint called, uh, I think they call it Kark, and it's really bad for you, really bad, the, the dust, the fumes. So I am trying to protect myself from it, but it does have Kark paint on this section and um, have to be conscious of that as I'm working along. So let me make some pie cuts in it. Let me make up some uh, little wedgies to uh, create some reinforcements. And then I'm just gonna grind all the joints and lay as much weld in there as I physically can. Oh, one other thing. I'm going to, um, I found a perfect pin for this to drill. It's a little spring loaded, not intentionally, but it is. And it's not a bad thing, because it'll keep the chattering down. I also may be able to twist this in shape uh, after I get it back off the truck. So. Hang on with me a little bit longer through the magic of uh, your world. The next time you see this, there'll be progress in my world. Uh, it is about 6.45 a.m., 7 a.m., Alaska time, Tuesday. All right. I think we have success. My welds are hideous, but there's a lot of them, if that counts for anything. I added this plate over here so that I could put the license plate up here because it can't be seen there and I don't need to be hassled by uh, Johnny Law because he can't see my tag. Um, right now it only has a pin in this side. Uh, it's kind of spring loaded so that when you put this side down it locks everything in place. Um, it's good and sturdy. It's got the pins in there and we have a you know a raking profile that matches the hood. And of course, I laid it back here and I dropped it several inches. So all in all, it's been, you know, majorly modified. I added these gussets, um, added these gussets in each corner. And it probably really ought to have a gusset here. There's no question in my mind that it should, but you know, for now it's not. So I think what I'm gonna do is um, go down to Napa, see if I can find some really textured, paint and uh, scotch bright pad scotch bright that all up and take a couple swipes at it paint it one direction and flip it over paint it the other direction i do have to grind a few sharp edges off of it here and there here we go little hercules spray bed liner that'll dry with like a sort of a semi flat finish um heater quit working all together. So I needed to get this done as soon as I could uh, to avoid um, ending up with, uh, you know, it freezing out here before I could get the paint to dry. So um, got a little bit of a rush from where I wanted to be. 
I gotta get that working. Uh, but in the meantime, there it is, painted and um, textured. Looks good. A little scotch bright work, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And there you have it. So we're gonna let that dry. I've got plenty of other things to do today. And while that's setting up, I guess I'll do other things. All right, so here we are. This is the mostly finished product of the front brush guard and a little bit of the uh, truck bed liner paint on there, all dried up and giving a little bit of texture, a little bit of look. And um, it is mounted. It's mounted to the original points down below, as we talked about before. It has my different gussets in it. I would like to put an additional gusset here, kind of a triangle, probably maybe eighth inch, three sixteenths plate in each corner. This is one of the main reasons why I wanted to use this type of metal in order to do this job. Uh, I'm not 100% positive, but I think they call this all metal. Anyway, what happens is you have these little inserts here. These things are pretty nifty. Spring-loaded, stay put. They're angled so that when it goes up into the, into the back of this, it'll rotate into place. And then you can bolt things in here. Uh, and this, so kind of, you know, goes in the bottom. And there's a, you, t you twist it, there it is. And now, let's see, there we are. So now there's a nut plate inside of this, there it is, inside of this all metal that I can attach a light, any kind of bracket, anything I want. And that was something I was really after here so that I could put my jack on here and ultimately be able to put like shovels or something on top of that as well. It is a, um, very utilitarity, utilitarian function. Uh, anywhere that I want to put these in, obviously I can set up and attach something to it. And then if you turn it the right direction, there we go, they come out. So these will be utilized. I also, I'm sure you can buy these in different threads. Um, these all say 224C728. 4A on them, uh, but I drilled and tapped this out to 3 8 so I could bolt my jack on there. Uh, but that is the idea of having a brush guard that serves multi-purposes. Uh, it is um, functioning as the original brush guard to keep junk off my headlamps and immediately off my grill, protecting these outer wings of the fenders from, you know, fairly lightweight off-road uh, activity. This additional bracing to go up and over and create framing that I can put things on. And also, you know, if you do get something that crashes down across the front of the truck, it's going to help protect that grill area from additional damage. Um, I will probably in the future get some cable mounts for here to go from this corner up to the corners of the truck. That'll help push brush away that comes up as you're going into a low trail. But I'm pretty happy with it. You know, total cost on this thing. All said and done, I had this all metal already. Uh, this is the original outer wings of the original brush guard. I had this quarter inch plate already. I'd already bought this quarter inch plate to put the winch mount together. Um, I had that pin, you know, and so I really, in Scotch-Brite pads, which I actually had some, I shouldn't have bought any, but Scotch-Brite pads and then some paint is really where I dropped the money on it. And the rest of it was stuff that I had around. Uh, I think it complements the the uh, winch really well, and it just gives me a lot more options to hang things on the truck, and I don't have that big, hideous, you know, monster stock guard out here, and this one was um, uh, more pronounced because it was actually damaged. I had to do a lot of uh, heating and bending and straightening of this, uh, but it came out pretty nice, so... I'm happy with it. That was the goal. It did not cost me, you know, $2,000 plus like I had anticipated uh, buying one pre-made. And the pre-made ones don't have those, they don't have those holes on them. So at the end of the day, you know, I got my own unique grill. Uh, a couple other things. I would like to put some sort of a cable or a chain in here to limit it because when it flips up, you know, it comes all the way out and then it lays out here on the ground like so. Um, I've seen where some of them have like a little cable tie to the hood so that when it comes up, 
it'll kind of ride close to the hood and I don't have to worry about tripping on it. And again, like I said, some gusseting plates in the corner here. And other than that, a couple of days, you know, a little bit of time off work and a couple of days of grinding, welding, grinding, welding. Please don't look close at my welds. Grinding, welding, grinding, welding, and a welding shop that was too busy to take the job even after they promised to take the job. But I'm glad that it came out this way on my own. And uh, again, challenge you to make something of something that you have and uh, have some fun, right?